Hi guys and welcome to Learn Extra Live, Grade 11's. Finally it is your turn. Hopefully you're watching during Grade 10 as well. Hey, learning more, learning extra full. Absolutely. Yeah, so tonight's show is brought to you by Liberty. So thank you guys. You guys absolutely rock. And tonight we're talking about mole calculations. Why don't you give the mindset as a bit of a rundown? Well, last week with Tracy, what we were doing is we were learning how to calculate moles and how to work with the moles and where moles came from. I'm going to use... I'm going to use these moles basically to, to get to something useful. We're going to figure out why we're working with moles, and we're going to work with mole calculations as well. Yeah, and we're going to be doing experiments, so it's all very exciting. Um, full set up, something exciting there. I don't know what that is, so you guys get better be stay tuned. Um, please only send and send us questions that are relevant to the topic. We will be answering them in the last 15 minutes of the show. After the break, we are going to work through an example or two. And don't forget to chat to us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Also chat to us at learn extra on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's it, guys. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that dreaded short little break, let full set up, and we'll get straight back onto the lesson as soon as we return. See you now. Hi there, welcome back guys. As promised, uh, Indy said that I was going to be doing a couple of experiments and this one's quite nice, especially if you're talking about hydrogen and oxygen as Tracy was doing. Now, hydrogen and oxygen, as you can see inside here, I've got a power pack which is supplying me with some interesting electricity and what's going is it's going into the water. So electricity plus water is not usually a great combination, but if you're doing experiments like this, it absolutely is. So I've got my electricity around about 12 volts going into water over here. And if you can see down at the bottom here, I've actually got some gases forming here. Now, this is not where I want to focus our experiment. However, I do want to see these gases, these gases which are coming up through this vessel. I've actually adapted this. And I want to make sure that everyone can see that these bubbles are coming out. Now, what I've done is I've attached a tube to allow these gases to escape. Now, if you know a little bit about water, Water is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Now, that very clever guy, Avogadro, was the guy to discover this, that gases react in a ratio. Now, what I'm going to show you is how I can combine hydrogen and oxygen back together in a two-to-one ratio, and that allows me to do something quite cool. So I'm going to take my delivery tube, sink it right down to the bottom, and what you'll start to notice, and I'm going to try to get, get this right to the edge so that you can actually see that. There we go. We're starting to make some bubbles, and they're collecting up at the top. Now, these are not just any bubbles. These bubbles contain a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen gas. Something quite cool about them is hydrogen and oxygen together are actually quite keen to make water again. So I hope Indy doesn't mind. We're going to make a little bit of noise, and we're going to make some water. We're going to make H2O from two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. So I've got my trusty lighter here, and I hope this works. We're going to see. There we go. You can start to notice whenever they get together, there's quite a loud bang. I'm going to let this you build up again. You warn me about the, the loud <laughs> bang. A little noise, Paul. <laughs> okay, well, Indy, it's going to get a little bit louder. <laughs> no. As what happens inside here is I've got two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. As that mixture gets in exactly the right ratio, what we're going to find is that they burn very well together. So there's another loud bang coming up as we watch hydrogen and oxygen combine with each other. Hydrogen and oxygen really love to be, be together, so you can see these bubbles collecting on the surface here. These are not just any bubbles. They are stoichiometric bubbles. I've got two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, and here comes the bang. Right, and you can see that this beautiful reaction that creates water is the same thing which drives rockets up into space. Absolutely amazing what happens when we mix just the right amount of chemicals. The problem is, and Avogadro saw this, how do we know how much of each? I was lucky here because I got the hydrogen and oxygen from water, so it was already in the correct ratio. When I've combined it inside these bubbles, I didn't actually physically go take two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. So you can imagine that chemists really struggled with this. What I'm going to show you today is how to do calculations when we've got these bubbles and I've got these two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Let's do one more before I hand it back to Indy. I hope your ears are shut. Ah. And and we can see that there's a very loud bang when hydrogen and oxygen come back together in that very exothermic reaction. You could hear the sound. There was actually heat produced here, and I could actually feel that explosion going on there. Indy, back to you. 
Yeah, and I could, I, I could even hear it, guys. It's really, really loud in the studio. And it's even worse because it kind of like, you know, reverberates inside the studio. Um, guys, don't forget to chat to us on Facebook. Let us, even let us know, even if you think that the experiments are cool and if there's something you want to see in coming shows, that's awesome. And I think full, full, yeah, mole calculations. I'm terrified. I think take it away. Let's get straight to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Sorry to terrify you, Indy. Uh, it's necessary in the name of science. Sweating. But if I'm sweating, it's because of the loud noises. <laughs> okay. No, well, absolutely. <laughs> I hope that people at home could actually hear that I'm hydrogen sure. and that ratio with the oxygen was absolutely amazing. Tracy was talking about filling big balloons of it, um, but I'm quite keen on having a studio at the end of this. Yes, so yes. We'll keep it to small bubbles now. So it is possible to actually explode the studio. Well, absolutely. It's the same mixture which is put inside rockets. Engineers know that if I've got two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, I can actually drive rockets up into space. So no one amazing. try this at home. No one try this no at home. No one try please. this at home, please. <laughs> it can go horribly <laughs> wrong. The guys at NASA know what they're doing. We know what we're doing inside the studio. We've got it on a small scale. It's nice and safe. Okay, so Fantastic. Please. Good, good, good idea. Okay, well, let's get into the grunts of it. Let's try and see what happened last week. We're going to do a little bit of a recap, and we're going to lead into this. Now, this is one of the things that Tracy was talking about last week. And Avogadro, this guy, and I'm going to bring up a picture of this guy. This guy looks very, very serious. He's got a very serious look on his face, and he was serious about figuring out chemistry. Avogadro was the first guy to actually figure out that there was this magic in ratios. He found out that atoms combined in these ratios, and we could actually use this to calculate things. Now, it might seem like something that you learn in grade 10, but for around about 50 years, nothing good happened inside chemistry. It seemed that everyone was stuck, and they were trying to figure out, well, how do I know how much of the one, how much of the others? We were all pretty much like blind cooks, randomly mixing things together and hoping that the right things came out. So this was the guy who started it all in motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through a couple of reactions. We're going to put up that challenge question. I'm going to ask Indy to actually post that up to the Facebook page, and we're going to try and see if you guys are really awake. Because this challenge question, as you guys said, you wanted more difficult questions. I've thought of a really amazing question, and it's very difficult. And what so we'll do is we'll give away the calculator to the person who comes up with the correct answer first. Absolutely, okay? So guys, no guessing. I want to know how you got what you got. Now, no just randomly posting A, B, C, D. I noticed a lot of you guys were doing it last week. If you're posting it, I want your calculations inside your post just to make sure that you know what you're doing. So mm. no random guessing, please. Mm. Okay, well, let's get into it. How did this guy actually manage to figure this out? Well, obviously the first one that he actually managed to start talking about was this two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, that very vital component of life. We started making it inside the studio. We took two parts hydrogen, we took one part oxygen, and something happened magically when we put them together and lit a bit of a flame. We actually created some sort of energy. And there it is. It's the same energy which drives these massive rockets up into space. It's the same energy created in taking these two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, and took man to the moon. It's the same energy which is taking up all our satellites. And if you're watching this on DSTV, this reaction actually had a part in tonight's show. So these two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen actually drove up that satellite into space and allowed you to watch this show, which is fantastic, and I'm great to be speaking to you. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to be doing now is before we take a short ad break, and we're going to post that question up online. I think Indy's busy with it, and she's waiting to do this. I'm actually going to put up this challenge question, go to the break, and give you a little bit of time to work this out. Okay, so let's go to it. Let's see what it is. Well, our challenge today, here it is. If 15 grams of H2O2, now that's hydrogen peroxide, decomposes in a reaction that is 70% efficient, how much O2 is formed? Now you'll notice there's actually a difficulty which I've built into this. There's two problems which I've posted inside here, so let's actually highlight some of the more difficult parts. I know that I've got 15 grams, there it is, 15 grams of H2O2, remember that's not water, we're dealing with hydrogen peroxide over here. It decomposes in a reaction which is 70% efficient. That's the part that's going to catch people. Right? How much O2 is formed? Now, here's your reaction. Two H2O2 molecules, which is a liquid, just like Tracy was talking about earlier, goes on to form H2O, which is now a gas, strangely enough, because it's so hot, goes on to make O2. Now, one of the things that we can find is that O2 is a gas, and I can measure its units in meters cubed. Okay, now there's another mistake which I'd like 
like you to figure out because there are some people who wrongly calculate certain things. I want you to spot what it is. Now, there's an intentional problem here that I've put forth. This is a problem which grade 10s and 11s and 12s all struggle with. I want you to figure out what that is. Okay, so one of the catches, I'm dealing with something a little bit strange. There's 70%, and there's something about units I want you to pay attention to. I want you to spot what it is with your answer. That's the one extra little bit of trick that I want people to post with this. Because too many people are guessing, I want to figure out what that problem is and which answer you choose is the correct one. All right, Kay. I think that's the challenge question up there, and I hope that people are getting working on this. They're starting to play around with their calculations. And if you don't, what I want you to do is watch the show, make some notes, and we're going to figure out this out together. Okay. All right, I think it's time for that ad break. What do you think? I think, guys, give me some time just to get this, this, this question up. I've got to figure out how to do all those little twos and things, but it will be up straight after this break. Um, I think what you should do is get up and jump a bit and get everything loosened up. And we'll see you now after the break. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. This is grade 11, physical science, and I know that you're all super excited. Phil has just told us what the, um, the challenge question is. I'm literally about to press post to have it up on the Facebook page, so keep your eyes peeled, guys. The first correct answer is going to win this awesome Casio calculator, but we do need you to show your workings out, and you need to tell us how you got there. Um, it's much easier for us, and we think it's a bit more fair when we're choosing a prize. What do you think, Phil? Absolutely, Indy. Mm. Okay, now, one of the other things I want with your posting is I want the correction to the units. There's one extra little bit on that challenge question. I want you to figure out what it is for that calculator. It's an amazing calculator. We're not just going to give it away to anybody. We want to figure out what that issue with the units is, and I want to know that correct answer with your working out. So you guys so have got to get typing. That's either a tip or a clue as well. Okay, it's well, there we go. That's all I'm kay. saying, That's Indy. all you're saying. That's all okay. you're saying. Yeah. Well, let's go figure out. Now, for those of you that are sitting there with a big hand to your head and you're trying to figure out how to do this, well, let's get stuck into it. Let's just remind ourselves how to work with moles and why we're working with moles in the first place. Well, last week, Tracy was talking about this guy, the very serious guy. Okay, Avogadro came up with a number. Now, Avogadro's number is 6 times 10 to the negative 23 particles. Okay, so, oh, well, we've actually made a correction there. Sorry. So what we've got to remember there is that that is a positive 23. That is a bit of a boo-boo. Okay, that is a positive 23. Now, that's something I'm used to. When we're working with really small numbers, we find that we're working with negative exponents there, but this is a positive 23. So if you're taking notes, please make that correction. Now, if I've got this number over here, 6 times 10 to the 23, to give you some sort of idea on how much that is, if you stacked paper in a big pile, if you had a mole of paper, you would have a stack which lasted you all the way to the moon and back four and a half times. It's an unbelievable amount of particles. So 6 times 10 to the 23, which is Avogadro's number, how do I actually work with it in equations? It's a constant which is given to you. You don't have to remember it. It's on your information sheet. Let's figure out how to work with this. Okay, well, first of all, why are we doing this? Moles are used to keep a count of the amount of a chemical. Now, the problem with this is that amounts are different for each chemical. If I tell you I've got 5 grams of hydrogen, I've got 5 grams of oxygen, that means different things. Moles are the universal way that I can actually deal with numbers. If I've got 2 moles of any substance, that means that I have the same number of particles, which is fantastic. Now, this very fancy word that I've underlined, stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is what we were doing in our experiments a little bit earlier. Stoichiometry is the practice of working with ratios inside my chemicals and working with moles specifically. So when I say I have two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, I could say two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. So we're starting to introduce the idea. Now, in that similar ratio, if we work with moles, we can work with any chemicals we like, and there's lots of them. So let's try to figure out if there's one way that I can approach all of these questions. So once I've figured out that I need to work with moles, let's jump into it. So there are a couple of steps inside this, and they are quite simple. One of the things that you've got to remember over here, and let's see if we can bring this up, is that I've first got to calculate the moles of the given substance. So that is definitely the first step. I've got to figure out how many moles I have of one particular substance that I'm given. 
Usually I start with something or I end up with something. Whichever way, those are the given substance. Number two is actually probably the one which makes the most sense to me, is working with the unknown moles. Right. How do I find the unknown moles? I use my ratios. The ratios come from a balanced chemical equation. But now, we're going to work you through this, and if you don't remember that, that's absolutely fine. I've got a fantastic example, and what we're going to do is we're going to take it to pieces, and we're going to figure out how to apply these three steps. They may not make sense at first until we actually do them together. So, very last, I've got to convert the moles into other units. So if they ask me for the mass or the volume or the concentration or whatever might be the case, I've got to convert back from moles into something which I find useful. So first, put it into moles, do the ratio, and get it out of moles again. Well, I'm going to jump straight into the ways that I do these three steps, and I'm just going to do a little bit of a revision on how these work. A lot, of a lot of people are saying, well, how do I actually calculate moles? Well, Let's actually just do a little bit of revision, because Tracy did this last week, and I'm going to run through this quite quickly. Step one, there's a few ways that I can do this. I can either use the mass using N, which is the number of moles, is equal to mass over the molar mass. And this is the one that you should be familiar with. Even from some grade 10s are doing this, and you'll find that moles is equal to the mass of a substance over its molar mass. This is the one that I'm going to focus on most today. Or I can use the volume. Now, this one is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to make a special note on this. Now, if I say it, you're not going to remember it. I need to write it down with you. Vm is the molar volume. And that, at standard temperature and pressure, and this is on your information sheet, so don't worry about re remembering it. And this is a little bit of a clue on that change to the challenge question. 22,4 decimeters cubed. Okay? That is my molar volume. That is how much volume something occupies at standard temperature and pressure. That's one atmosphere that's at zero degrees Celsius for a gas. The V is my volume of my gas. If I've got a gas and I'm given it, I can work with that. And again, my number of moles. Concentration is probably the trickiest one for a grade 11 to grapple. Concentration is the subject of the formula, so your algebra has got to be pretty good. My number of moles over here is definitely going to be the subject of my formula if you want to calculate it. Just a note again on the units here. And units are usually the problem in chemistry. That concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed. I'm not sure that we're going to get time to work with concentration this evening. It's definitely one of the things that I'd like to address later on in the lessons. But concentration is definitely one of the ways that you can work out moles. Now, I can talk until I'm blue in the face, but none of this is going to make any sense until we walk each other through an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example. Now, we're going to work with this, and I want to find out what the answers are. Now, if I use an example to figure out the use of ratios, this is my example. I've got a lot of information. Remember, you should be sitting there. If you write down this question, I want you to sit with the highlighter after this. There's a lot of info about chemicals and about amounts, and I want to figure out exactly where we're going with this. How do I use the three steps in mole calculations to help me solve this question? Now, these are worth a lot of marks. They can be up to six or seven or even eight marks. And I'm going to show you where all those marks come from. So we've got some information about the mass of one of my given chemicals. So I've got five grams of sodium nitrate. That's an important piece of information. It tells me how much I've got the mass, and it tells me what I've got the mass of sodium nitrate. Now, this is where grade 10 chemistry is going to help you. And if you don't know what that is, you better go study. So sodium nitrate is given. It's heated, and the products are sodium nitrite. There's my one product. Remember that my products go on the right-hand side of a reaction. And oxygen. So oxygen is out there. Lots of information. Let's just make sure that we've got all the info that we need. The rest is all just details. I'm told that sodium nitrate is heated, and that's my reactant. Sodium nitrite and oxygen are my products. Now for the question. Calculate the mass of each product. Now, I'm dumped in the deep end here. I'm not helped by my question at all. So how do I begin going through this? How do I even approach this? This looks insurmountable. This looks like I can't solve it. Well. Let's start with the question, let's start with a description, let's write down the information that I've got and see how to work through those three steps. Now, one of you, 
um, actually managed to post this last week. And one of the things that really bothered you was these written, written words and these lots of sentences. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you once again to the biggest problem when you're doing stoichiometry. I need a balanced formula. Sodium nitrate is our reactant, and if you didn't know that it's NaNO3, I suggest you go and study. They don't have to tell you what sodium nitrate's formula is. If you're lucky and your examiner likes you a lot, they will give this to you, but don't guarantee it. I've got sodium nitrate, there it is. NaNO3 is my reactant. My product here, NaNO2, is sodium nitrite. Remember that it is O2 for nitrogen, and O3 gives me nitrate. My other project product is oxygen. Now, the biggest problem that people find when they're doing stoichiometry, you have to work with a balanced equation. So if you want to add something to do before step one, we're going to balance this equation together. Let's check the, the, the various elements. I've got sodium on each side. There's one of each. Nitrogen on each side, one of each. However, here's the problem. Oxygen is very often the problem. Three oxygens on the left. I've got one, two, three, four. Once again, I've got a problem of odd numbers on the left and evens on the right. One of the good ways that you can figure out how to solve the problem of odds and evens is I can make an odd number into an even number by multiplying it by two. If you're stuck, this is a good approach. So let's multiply that one by two. Okay, now I've got two nitrogens, two sodiums, and six oxygens. Let's try to see if I can get that to happen on the right-hand side. Well, the first thing that I'll notice is that I need two sodium. So if I have two sodium, two nitrogen on either side, let's see if our oxygen balances. I had six on the left. If I check here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means that I've got six oxygens on the left, six oxygens on the right. I need to be able to balance this before we even get started with our question. You need a balanced equation. Because stoichiometry is all about the numbers. It's about the two makes two makes one. Let's follow through on that. How are we doing on the page there, Indy? Good, good. Um, do you have time for a quick, quick, tiny little joke? Just quickly. <laughs> okay, let's, 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 see, let's see if we can handle it. Um, why, was one of the mole of, why was the mole of oxygen molecules excited when he, when he walked out of the singles bar? I don't know why, Indy. Because he got... Avogadro's number. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, very, good very work. good. People are on the ball this evening. Hey? Absolutely. That's well, good. with that, let's carry on with this calculation. Very nice joke. Let's carry on with this. On the topic of Avogadro, let's follow the steps. Step one, remember, I needed to calculate the moles of the given substance. There are five grams of sodium and not sodium, but sodium nitrate. So one of the things that I noticed is that people are leaving out bits and pieces. So let's just make this correct. I think it's disappeared behind my equation, but that is definitely sodium nitrate. Let's make sure that we absolutely correct here. Okay, I think my nitrate's disappeared behind my mole calculation, but that's fine. Okay, so N, which is my number of moles, again, how did I know to go for this equation? Well, I'm given five grams. There it is. I'm told that I've got five grams, and five grams is a mass. The only equation which can help you with mass or help you deal with mass is number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass of whatever substance you've got. So let's go into that calculation. Let's see where I got my numbers from. Well, I've substituted in my five. Let's tick them off as we go. I've got five grams of the one substance, so there it is. I've substituted in my given amount. Here's the tricky part. I see a whole bunch of numbers over here, which I don't even recognize. Now, I want you to remember that sodium nitrate, and let me do this with you. Sodium nitrate has got a formula of NaNO3. If I take a look on my periodic table, Na has got a mass of 23, nitrogen of 14, and oxygen of 16. Now, you don't need to remember these. I just remember these because I work with these all the time, and I love my job, and these numbers just go in. It's like a phone number. So sodium has got a mass number of 23, nitrogen 14, and oxygen of 16. You'll notice that I've multiplied 16 by 3 because there's three oxygens on there. Okay, well, where does this leave us? Well, let's go a little bit further down, and let's see where the calculation takes us. There it is. There's my molar mass 
for sodium nitrate. That is the mass of one mole of sodium nitrate, NaNO3. So 5 divided by that number of 85, I will find that I've got a total number of moles here. And you've been told to round to two decimals if you don't know. There it is, 0 0.0588 or 0 0.06 moles. And that is my answer just for the number of moles of sodium nitrate. Okay, now this has not solved our question. A lot of people are saying, oh, fantastic, I've got an amount, I've got an answer. Great, let's stop calculating. And that's not the case. This is just the first step. All I've done is I've taken 5 grams and I've figured out that that is 0 0.06 moles. That's my first step, mass into moles. Now remember that your second step uses that moles. Okay, so let's do exactly that. Let's figure out how to use my ratios in my reaction. The important numbers here are, I've got two over there. There it is. I've got two sodium nitrates, make two sodium nitrites, and what happens is one oxygen comes out. And sometimes it's actually useful to write in a number there. If you're feeling uncomfortable with the fact that there's not a number, I know that two of my reactants makes two products of my sodium nitrite and one oxygen. Now let's use my given information. Let's find out how I can use the number of moles of sodium nitrate. And let's figure out where that goes. So I've got sodium nitrate, and that makes 0 0.06 moles. And let's figure out how to calculate that. So if I figure out what the ratio is between these three chemicals, and you'll notice that I've actually said the number of sodium nitrate, the number of NaNO2. Now, what I wanted to do was actually to discuss with you how to do these ratios. So let's work with that. Let's actually shift that underneath, and let's work with this mole ratio. I know that I've got a 2 to 2 to 1 ratio, and I'm going to link this up. Let's link it up there. I know that I've got 2 to 2 to 1. And this is why I wanted to shift it up. I know that I've got 2 moles of this, or whatever moles of this, react to make 2 of that and 1 of that. Now let's work with the numbers which I was given. There it is. I was given that amount. Now I need to ratio this. Now some people really battle with the ratios, and that's absolutely fine. I know that if I've got a 2 to 2, I know that I divide by the number above and multiply by the one which I want to go to. Let me just repeat that. The way that I got from one to the next is I start from here. Let's actually work with these numbers, and let's perhaps color code this if I've got that number over there. So I'm going to take my 0, 0,06, divide it by, and let me color code that. Let's figure out where that's going. So I divide by that 2. And then I'm going to multiply by this 2, and that will give me the same number. Now you might say, well, if it's 2 to 2, it's exactly the same. But it's not that simple. So that allows me to get back to the same number. Let's do it for oxygen, and I'll show you why this is quite tricky. Because a lot of people don't know how to work with ratios. Let's work with this one, and let's actually move it across and try and apply it to oxygen. If I start off with 0 0.06 of sodium nitrate, and I want to find out how much oxygen I'm producing, and I want to figure out how I got this 0 0.03, well, let's do this together. I'm going to start off with 0 0.06. That's the stuff that I've got. I'm going to divide it by. Now, let's actually outline this with a slightly different... There we go. Let's actually make this into yellow. Okay? So what I'm finding is that I've got divide by 2, the same number that I've got. There we go, the green number. I divide by what I've got, and then I multiply by what I want. And I definitely want to go to oxygen. And oxygen was that nice one over there. And that lands me up. And let's just highlight it exactly the same. I think it's going to come out a nice yellow again. And I'm going to come out with my answer of 0 0.03 moles. There it is. There is my answer. I've figured out that I've got 0 0.06 moles of my one product, 0 0.03 moles of the other product. There's a lot going on on the screen. I want you to write this down and check that you can actually understand these calculations because this is looking a little bit messy. I just want to guide you through where all these numbers came, th came from. I remembered that I've got a mole ratio of two of my reactants makes two of my products makes one of the other product. And that lands me up with the ratio in which I should be putting these moles. 
So 0 0.6 is to 2, 0 0.6 is to the other 2, and notice how this one is half the size of the others. So I've got 2, 2, 1 as my ratio, and that's where they came from. If I want to work from one number to another space on these ratios, I divide by the 1 that I've got, and I multiply by the 1 that I want to get. Let me actually write that down, because that might be something that's worthwhile for ratios. So I take what, whatever moles I've got, so the moles which I've got, I divide it by the ratio got, and I multiply by the ratio which I want. So this is the way that you do it. You divide by got, multiply by want, and this will get me the moles that I want. This is a nice, easy way of thinking of these ratios. This seems to be the most common problem that people have got. I start out with how many moles I've got, I divide by that ratio, and I multiply by the ratio which I want, and that lands up with being the moles that I want. I hope the people at home are catching on to this and they're managing to figure this out. I hope so. If they're not, they must just let me know. Absolutely. I think some people are probably calculating this at home and hopefully getting to their own answers as well. Mm. Please share this on the page. We are almost home, and um, I'm not sure how much time we've got left, but um, I'm going strong with this question. I'd like to go a little bit longer if that's carry okay on. by you. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Until well, the director tells us otherwise, we shall just carry on. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I love talking. Okay. That must be quite obvious. <laughs> okay. But now, here's the part that I actually want to work through with you. I've got to convert the moles into other units. Well, the problem is that I'm not actually sure which units I want to calculate. Well, let's start off with the moles. Let's actually start off with the moles of the one chemical. I know that I've got the moles of Na, NO2. That's my one product. I know that that is equal to 0 0.06 moles. Okay, there it is. Now, I can go any way from here. What I can do is I can take this and I can convert this into many different ways. I could convert this into a mass. Now remember that this is just for the sake of question three. We're going to take a look at the question and see exactly what they were asking, and we're going to do exactly that to it. Okay, so I can convert this into a mass. I could convert this into a volume if it, if it was a gas. But it's not. It's a salt, which is a solid. And in this case, we could con convert this into a concentration if I really wanted. If this was dissolved in a liquid, like Tracy was doing earlier, we could actually figure out what the concentration was. And a lot of people are not going to understand what conch means. So I'm actually going to write that out. So concentration. OK, fantastic. All right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take these moles, took, take a look at our question, and see exactly what they were asking. Well, let's do this together. And let's go back. Let's go back. And we've got our question over here. So it says, calculate the mass of each product. Well, let's figure out how to do this. Let's try and figure out where my five grams disappeared to. So five grams will have changed into different products, and I actually want to show you something quite cool right at the end of this. So we've balanced it. We found the number of moles. We did our ratio, and now we're at step three. Well, here's the one that I'm going to be using. There it is, the mass. Well, I've got to find a way of changing moles back into mass, and I'm not exactly sure how to do that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking my number of moles of Na... NO2, and I actually want you to calculate this, and I want you to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to do the first bit with you, and I'm going to let you do the second bit. So the MR, something about the MR I haven't shown you. Let's do that together. I know that my number of moles is 0 0.06. I'm trying to find my mass, and let's do this together. I'm going to crouch down, and let's do the calculation. Remember that sodium was 23. Nitrogen was 14, and two oxygens is the big difference. So it's no longer 85. And um, let's actually extend that. Let's make that a little bit neater. We're starting to get a little bit messy, and I complain about my students. And look at me here. This is a nice big, nice big mess. So all right, so let's take a look at what that all equals. And I actually want to find out if people can figure out this mass before me. So I've got a mass. I once had 85, I no longer have 85, but I have 69 as a, as a molar mass. So that is exactly 16 
off my previous mass. So if I took 85 and I took away 16, which was the oxygen, that's the mass which I get. I want students to work on this at home. I think it's time for an ad break. What do you think, Indy? Definitely. Okay, guys, I'm going to let Phil take a little sip of water because he's talk been talking a lot, a lot. <laughs> and I hope that you guys can take a little bit of a rest because your, your hands have been writing a lot, a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. We'll be back with you in a second. Keep challenging yourself with that challenge question. And the answer is coming up shortly. See you now. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. This is grade 11 and I hope you're all having an awesome, awesome time. I see a lot of you have been writing down on our page the challenge questions to so keep those coming. I just want to say big thanks to Liberty. You guys rock. You guys are awesome for making this show possible. Um, also, chat us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. You can even get to it on your cell phone. And if your parents ever say anything to you about using Facebook and your cell phone, you can say using it to learn more and using it to learn extra. Extra. So without further ado, let's get straight back to Phil. Phil, take Thank it away. Thank you so much, Indy. Okay, a lot of you are posting some really, really awesome answers to the challenge questions. Some of you have spotted that problem with the units, and I actually want to guide you through that. So if you're one of those people, Indy's going to be taking a look through that page and actually helping you win one of those fantastic calculators. Okay, well, if you've been using your calculator at home and you've arrived at a mass, what you'll notice is that there's some mass missing. I've noticed that I went from having 5 grams of solid, now I've only got 4,14 grams. The question is, what about the oxygen? So if I take a look at this, what about the oxygen? What I'll notice is that I went from 5 grams to being 4,14 grams. What about the rest of the oxygen? Well, let's figure out how much mass that was. Let's go down and let's make a little bit of space. Let's work with oxygen. Let's work with the amount of oxygen which I had. And let's do that. I know that the number of moles of oxygen is equal to 0 0.03 moles. Okay, well, just in exactly the same way, I'm going to be working with these moles, turning them into a mass, and seeing if we can't figure out where that 0 0.86 grams went. Okay, there we go. So I've gotten my number of moles of oxygen is equal to my mass over my molar mass. Now, lucky for me, this molar mass is a really easy one. Uh, let's not lose that all together. Let's work together. Let's work with this moles of oxygen. I know that that is 0 0.03, and I know I'm looking for my mass, and my mass over here, I've got 2 times 16. The reason that I've got 2 times 16 is because oxygen is diatomic. That looks very messy, and I think I should neaten it up. Okay, so 2 times 16, there it is. 2 times 16, because each oxygen is 16. If I figure out the mass here, what I think I'll find is that I've got 0 0.86 grams. And if I put that back into my original picture, something interesting appears. That's 0 0.86. I noticed that all five grams of my initial stuff went into being a product, which is really fantastic. I know that all of the mass was conserved. I found the mass of my reactant. I changed it into the mass of the product. I think it's time to go back to that challenge question. What do you think, Indy? I think so. I think I have found the person who has answered first. Okay. However, I, I'm not the physics teacher, so I'm going to have to read it to you, and you're going to have to tell me what you think. Okay. Okay. Two-part answer to this, uh, to this question. I actually wanted to guide people through it, and some of you might have spotted the error. A lot of people are coming out with the standard, okay, well, meters squared is my standard unit, and that's what I wanted you to spot. This is a particular problem with these. You'll find that it's got to be decimeters cubed. Now, that was the first part. Mm. This is how we're going to see if you're watching, if you're calculating carefully. Let's see how I got to this answer. And if you're wondering, I've circled it. The correct answer here is C. Now, if you're one of those people that managed to get an answer which was kind of close to here and you weren't sure what to do, I'm going to figure out with you. We're going to work our way through that and maybe take some questions. Are there a lot of questions on the wall? I think th there will be a lot of questions answered we've okay. after we've answered this question. Okay, fantastic. Mm. A lot so of get those in, guys. I mm. think a lot of the questions are going to be about the 70% yes. and about the units. So let's work with what we're given. Let's try and figure out what's going on. I've got 15 grams of hydrogen peroxide. Let's go through our steps. First of all, before we start, we need to figure out a balanced chemical equation. So, I need to start out. This is what you should be doing at home when I answer this question. I've got 15 grams of this stuff. It's going to make water. It's going to make oxygen. 
and I work with my balanced equation ready, and I even gave it to you, which is really nice of me. I was given 15 grams of my original substance, and what I've got to do is I've got to calculate moles. Now, I'm going to work with this fantastic calculator, and we're going to be working our way through this and actually figure out these moles together. So, now, what you'll notice is I actually start labeling my moles because there's moles all over the place and people get confused and I want to make sure that I can keep track of which moles I'm working with. Now, I'm sure that when you look at your notes, you're going N, which N? Is it N of the H2O2? Is it N of the water, of the oxygen? I don't know. Everything's going crazy. What you've got to do is label it right from the beginning. So, I know that N is equal to M over molecular mass. Always write down your formula before you put in any numbers. Okay, so let's go to it. Let's figure out. So I've got 15 grams. There it is. And at the bottom there, I've got 2 times 1 plus 2 times 16. And if you've got one of these really cool calculators like I've got, I'm going to work you through this. I'm going to figure out what goes on inside here. So I've got my fraction there. I've got 15 divided by, and there's my sum. Just remember to do this all inside 1. So I've got 2 times 1, which is 2, plus... 2 times 16, which is 32 for my oxygen there, and we'll find out. Now, this is step one. Figure out the moles of what we're given. So, there it is, my number of moles, which I've got, 0.44 moles, and let's go back to that. So, I've got 0.44 moles there. Let's just check that we can write that in. There we are. We've got, uh, let's make sure that we've got the correct pen selected. There we go, 0.44, and that's the number of moles of what I'm given. Okay, so this was step one. Step one was always to calculate the number of moles. Now, what I wanted to know was how much oxygen was going to be formed. Now, oxygen needs to be formed, and it is a gas. So step two, let's figure out what is the ratio of H2O2 to oxygen. So here's step two. I know that the number of moles of H2O2 to oxygen, there it is, I know that the ratio between these two from my reaction is 2 to 1. So I know if I've got 0.44 moles of this, let's just practice that method I gave you. I'm going to divide by the one that I've got, multiply by the one which I want. So I'm going to take this, and actually let's write this down. A lot of people really struggle with the ratios, and I want to make sure that that is not you. So let's use this number. 0.44, I divide by the 2, and I multiply by the 1, which will give me 0, 2, 2, 2. There we go. I've got the moles of oxygen. I'm nearly there. What I've then got to do is I've got to figure out what's going on at the end in terms of this volume. Okay, so step 3 was convert back to other units. I now know that I've got 0, 2, 2 moles. And let's just make sure that everyone can see what we're doing there. I know that I've got 0, 2, 2 moles of my oxygen. Let's figure out what volume that is. So the only reaction which can give me that, my number of moles of oxygen, is equal to V over Vm. So if I substitute and I rearrange, let's put it in. So let's make some space there. Let's work with this. I know that I've got 0, 0.22 over there. And I've got my V, which I want. My Vm, which was 22,4. Remember that hint that I dropped halfway through the show? Now, one of the things that you're going to have to do is multiply them together. Now, one of the things that I'll notice when I do multiply them together is I actually get one of these answers. And that's the thing which confused a lot of people. So if I take 0, 0,22 and I multiply that by 22, 4, there I get an answer which actually kind of appears here. So what do I do with this? What do I actually do with this? Now, this is not the final answer. What I need to do then still is I need to figure out what to do with this. I need to work with a 70%. And if I work with a 70% yield of this, what I'll find is that I multiply that by 0 0.7 and I'll get an answer there. Okay, so if I've arrived at this answer by any other means, what I'll actually find is that I've worked incorrectly. Either I haven't worked with a 70% or I haven't realized that there is a 2 to 1 ratio. What I'll notice here is that I've got a 2 to 1 ratio, which is going to get me an answer there. The most correct answer here is C. I think there's going to be a correction a little bit later on, and I'm actually going to post it on the, the Facebook page there. I just want to make sure that everyone's understanding there. Are there questions? Sure.
We've got, I th can you believe, we've got four minutes left to the end of the show. Okay. This is ridiculous. It's amazing how fast time actually goes. Okay, let's have a look. Sure. Okay. There's quite a few. <sighs> Sorry, Paul. No, not at all. Okay. okay, I don't know if I don't know if this is right or if this is wrong. So I don't mm -hmm. want to embarrass. Uh, Pakihiro says we might have made a mistake. He says he gets confused with the 0 0.96. 0 0.96. Yes. I'm in, not in, sure where in that comes from. Yeah, that's. I, I say, have said Pakihiro. Please let me know where that is. Okay, the 0 0.96. I'm yeah, looking for his number here. I was also having a look and I couldn't really see it. But he did post it five minutes ago, so maybe you can clarify with that. Okay, perhaps. Um, I'll jump online a little bit later and answer any of those questions anyway. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. You know, guys, Phil's very good with that kind of stuff. Um, let's have a look here. Sure. I, I can see. I've got all these answers coming <laughs> in. Hey. Okay. Why do you... I mean, why do we use AMU and oh. sometimes grams per moles to ah, measure relative question. molar mass? Okay. Now, the problem is there's some confusion from grade 10 and going into grade 11. AMU is a unit which is used. Sometimes it's actually called Dalton's to confuse it even further. So let's work with something very simple. Let's work with the, the amount which I was showing early, earlier, which was my NaNO3. Okay. NaNO3 has got a molar mass. Now, some people say, well, I've got 85 grams per mole. That's my molar mass. Now, what you'll notice is in grade 10, I wasn't working with moles quite yet when I started to do this. You were told to work with a relative formula mass. The way that I got to this 85, remember, was that I took my sodium, which was 23. I took nitrogen, which was 14. And I took three oxygens over there. I took three oxygens over there. There we go and I land up with my 85 grams per mole. But the question is, when does it become AMU? Now this is a molar mass. This is when I'm talking about MR, or relative molar mass. Now this can have decimals. This is allowed to have decimals. Now AMU is atomic mass units. Now this is A dot M dot U. Atomic mass units are sometimes called Daltons because these are 85 individual pieces. Now you will find that AMUs generally do not have decimals unless you're working out something with different isotopes. Now AMUs are atomic mass units. Now this is not a molar mass. This is called a relative formula mass. Now I think we've got time for one short question. I'm not sure how the Facebook page is looking there. Sure, I think we do. Literally got one minute. Okay, well let's make it a quick one. Gosh, I wonder if there is even a quick one. I think everyone... I think we may have to leave it until later. Yeah, Guys, I think what we're going to do is we've got a whole bunch of questions. Phil will try and check the page a bit later and get back to as many of you as possible. If you guys still are struggling with questions from today, post them on our page and we will get the help desk to help you out. I promise you. Just give us about 48 hours. We do send them off to experts and they do get back to you. So grade 11s, thank you for such a fantastic show. And thank you, Phil. Sure. And yeah, grade 12s, don't forget that you are on next. And I hope you had a great one. Bye, grade 11. See you same time, same place next week.